I'm Rachel. So far, most of this channel has consisted of vlogs from my time at UCD. And I receive a lot of questions from people who are going to be attending UCD about various aspects of it. So I thought it might be a good idea to just put together a video with all of your questions answered, hopefully. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them as soon as I possibly can, I promise. I pinky swear. So, for any of you who would like more insight into what being a UCD international student is like from somebody who experienced it themselves, this video is for you. This video will be separated into topic chapters, so if you are looking for a specific piece of information or two, feel free to skip ahead, otherwise stick with me and I will walk us through everything that you could possibly want to know that I can think of. First, of course, is the application process. <laughs> I applied to UCD through a university where I live in New York, so I'm sure that they did a lot of things for me during the application process. However, I was still responsible for submitting a fair amount of materials. The process will vary, obviously, based on who you are, where you're coming from, what program you're doing, what university you're going through, but the basis of it I will cover right here. Side note for the American students before I get started, course on the UCD site typically means like major or like program, and then module means classes. When I first started, I was a little bit confused about the wording of different things. Now, I will be using those words pretty much interchangeably throughout this video, and I apologize. Old habits die hard, and I refer to courses, classes, modules, everything. It's kind of the same to me, so sorry about that in advance. So, applications work based on specific colleges or schools through UCD. Whichever college controls the majority of the courses that you want to take at UCD is the one that you apply to. However, this may not be the same school of your major in your home university. I actually messed this up when I did it. So I'm a business student at my home university in New York. However, I wanted to take uh, three arts classes while I was at UCD, and then my other two classes were a science and a business course. However, I didn't realize that that was how it worked, and so I applied to the business school realized what I did, had to withdraw my application to the business school in UCD and reapply to the art school, which actually got back to me much faster than the business school did, so that was fine by me. But that's just to show you, if you make a mistake, it can be corrected. Don't sweat it. In order to determine what you need to study, first make a list of everything that you have to take, if anything, based on your home university's requirements. Then go to this site, which I have linked also in the description. Browse through everything UCD has to offer, because as you can see, there are a lot of possible courses you can take. Make a list of all the ones that interest you and any that apply to your possible requirements and then narrow them down from there. Make sure to have backups and backups for your backup because getting into a class is never guaranteed until you are officially enrolled in that class. I will quickly show you around UCD's student website, SysWeb, and then we can move on. Take it away, Rach! Thanks, Rachel! This is UCD Connect. You scroll down a little bit, you can access SysWeb. There's probably other ways to access it. This is SysWeb the student information system on the web, as you can see here in the corner, you should be able to access this right around the time of your application, either right before, during, or right after. Whenever you receive your UCD student email, you should be able to access this web. And this is really your hub for communicating with the college. I'm gonna walk you through it a little bit. So this is your timetable. Obviously that's important. You can see your schedule of classes, as well as my registration, if you haven't yet chosen your modules. You click here and you follow the directions to register for your modules. Here's where you can access things. So a couple of the more important things, registration fees and assessment. This is a pretty important tab. You will need program fees and payments here. When your rent is due as a UCD resident, you will go here and pay your rent. Again, there's probably other ways to access it, but that's how I always did it. This is an important tab. And then if you go up to the top and press campus, this is also an important tab um, for student events, for uh, rooms if you want to book a room or a uh, kitchen even we did it through there UCD residences if you click this it brings you to your residence portal as a UCD resident if you have any guests staying over you need to log them here just for like safety liability reasons really and of course you can view the details of your residence here you can pay your residential fees here all sorts of things I believe you can also see your roommates here I can't because I'm no longer living there, but as an incoming student, you will be able to access who your roommate is there. And I have tips later on about roommates as well. You can access clubs and societies if you've registered to any of them. As you can see, there are so many societies at UCD. There are so many, so many societies for any possible niche interests that 
you have. It's probably here. And yeah, those are the most important things here, in my opinion. You can see your application if you need to access that for any reason at all. You can also see on program services any tasks that need to be completed, which you will want to monitor as an incoming student. And yeah, that's the basis of SysWeb. Really, the most important thing is accessing who your roommates are, paying your rent each month for the residents, and checking your grades, perhaps, and your timetable. Those are important as well. That's SysWeb. That's all I've got for you. Back to you, Rachel. Next, we are going to discuss accommodation. I stayed on campus for the duration of my semester in lovely Roebuck Hall. I actually really enjoyed it and, word of advice, it is much newer than most of the residency halls despite being the same price. So I very much recommend Roebuck Hall as the best residence hall. I'm sure people have different opinions, but the village is also really nice. But be warned that it, Roebuck Hall, like most residencies, has no oven. <laughs> you can use a communal one in the village if needed, but you do have to share it, and the booking system is not great. We did multiple times for like group dinners or if we were making like a cake or something. So you will become very accustomed to stovetop cooking at UCD if you don't have an oven, which most of the residence halls do not. And microwaves, of course. But you'd be surprised how versatile stovetops can be. I mean, tortilla chips. To get accommodation on campus, you will be given a specific time and date to log into SysWeb to apply for whatever room in whatever apartment in whatever residency hall you want. Make sure that you have that time and that date saved, memorized, written down everywhere. You have to log in then, because even if you log in then, a lot of it will already be gone. It is of the utmost importance that you are certain you have that time and date correct. To prepare for this, research each residency hall and make a list. I'm a big list fan if you can't tell. Research each residency and list them in order of preference for yourself. Some are newer, some are older, some are more expensive, some are less expensive, some have fewer or older or more updated features, some are located more centrally in campus, like the village, any of the village suites are right at the center, and some are quieter. You know, Roebuck was pretty quiet, it was on the outskirts. I think um, Bellevue, Bell Mer Merville, Glenamina, they were all kind of a little bit farther out um, from the village. The village ones are also taller, so they get a wider view. Um, it just depends what you're looking for. That's up to you. You have to research that and list them in order of preference and then on your SysWeb date apply for whatever is the best one that you want the most that is still available. I cannot speak to finding accommodation outside of UCD simply because I have not done it and have no experience with it. Perhaps sending an email directly to UCD, probably to ResLife, they could help direct you to off-campus resources for accommodation. I know a few people who stayed off campus for the semester and although it may seem stressful, they really enjoyed it. They had no qualms with it. Transportation in Ireland is really good and they all enjoyed their time. Besides, staying off campus will immerse you even further into Irish living, so it, it has its benefits. However you get accommodation, good luck. Packing. What will you bring? to your accommodation. That's important. This obviously varies based on needs and lifestyles, but here is a general guide. Clothing, pretty foundational. I think I brought like three pairs of jeans. I'm a jeans fan, don't judge me. Several long sleeve tops, as in, you know, sweaters, hoodies, uh, long sleeve t-shirts, couple jackets, a few tank tops, mostly to wear under things like sweaters and jackets, a sweater dress, just because you should probably have at least one somewhat formal item. Obviously, sweater dresses aren't for everyone, but one possible like nice dinner outfit. And I brought four pairs of shoes, a pair of sneakers, a pair of hiking boots, a pair of fashion boots, and another pair of fashion boots, because I like fashion boots, that's what I wear. If you wear sneakers all the time, then bring sneakers. I do think a pair of hiking boots, or at least, you know, pretty solid walking shoes that you can get muddy, is a great item to bring. Nightwear, again, not too much. I think I had four or five pairs of night clothes, which is honestly too much. Maybe you're probably like good with like four, four sets of pajamas. But you can wear those a couple times. Again, whatever is best for you and your routine, your lifestyle, your habits. Just remember you don't want to bring too much because everything you bring, you have to lug up to your residency hall, into your hall, you have to unpack it. And then at the end of the semester, you got to pack it and bring it home with you or else that's quite a waste. So try and pack as light as you can while also being comfortable. 
obviously undergarments and socks and belts and scarves and hats and gloves, whatever you think you'll need. I mean, you're not going to the tundra, but you want to be warm and, and dry and comfortable in your time. Like, I, I didn't bring a winter coat. You're not going to need a winter coat. However, I did bring sort of like a waterproof trench coat for, for rain, you know? Toiletries, again, whatever you need based on your habits, but again, not too much. Pro tip, bring at least one roll of toilet paper because there's no guarantee it will be in your residence room when you get there, whether you're on UCD campus or elsewhere. You'll probably have one, but just in case, bring one roll of toilet paper, at least one, so that you can have it before you get a chance to go to the store. <laughs> Medicine, this is something people maybe overlook. If you have any prescriptions, make sure you get those filled in advance. You know, get a note from your doctor, whatever you need. Any over-the-counter things, you know, bring painkillers, bring Tums or Pepto-Bismol or whatever it is you might use if you get sick, if you get a stomachache, if you get a headache, if you catch COVID, if you get the flu. Bring something to help you medically. Bring bandages. A pack of band-aids will always be beneficial to have around because you never know. I once biked into a thorn bush with my groceries, so that was fun, and so I needed a couple band-aids. It was, they were shallow cuts and they healed within a week, but you never know what you might need. I think I cut myself cooking a couple times too. Also, if you're a woman, bring at least one pack of whatever feminine hygiene products you might want. Because again, you don't know how soon you'll be able to get a chance to go to the store, or how soon you'll want to go to the store, honestly, because you might be tired, who knows? Might be busy. Bring razors for shaving if, if that's something that you do. Toothbrush, toothpaste, hopefully everybody's gonna need at least one of those. And again, these are things that you could get there, but you're going to want pretty immediately, so at least bring it like a travel version. Bring a towel, ideally one that can be left behind because that's something that takes up a lot of space and that you may not want to buy from, you know, Ikea or wherever once you're there. But if you bring one that you won't miss leaving behind, that's fantastic. Like my duvet cover that I brought, for my bed, I left it behind. I don't need a duvet cover. I have a comforter on my bed right here. Check with your accommodation information and they should have, you know, the size of the bed and whether or not you need to bring it. If you are living on campus at UCD, odds are you need a duvet cover and a pair of sheets. Another pro tip, pro tip, command strips. This was my mother's idea and mother knows best as usual. So bring a pack of command strips, command hooks, whatever because you can put them on the wall, you can hang things. Like I had a, a little hook for my purse. I had a hook for my coat and my rain jacket. I had a hook for my towel, for my scrubby in the shower. I had a little hook. They're so convenient, so worth it. They're cheap, they're light, they're easy to transfer. I brought them there. I took off the ones I used and I brought them back. Absolutely bring command strips. They're the most helpful thing because they don't damage the wall either. Or they shouldn't if you're using it right, so. <laughs> Hangers, another item you can leave behind. Bring light, easy ones to bring with you. And again, these are things you can get at Ikea, but you may not want to. It's up to you, really. A set of silverware might be a good idea. Again, nothing too fancy, because if you leave it or if it gets mixed in with roommate silverware, it's not the end of the world. Like, at least one fork, one knife, one spoon is probably good to have. I brought them and I kept them in my room, so if I was having, like, a late night snack, I could just have that silverware. Or the week that I caught COVID, of course, I was going to UCD in 2022, when that was still kind of an issue. Now it's not such an issue, but I had to quarantine in my room for a week. Power adapters. You need power adapters. Depending on where you're coming from, the plugs in your electrical devices are different than the plugs that there are in Ireland. You want a power adapter and potentially a power converter depending on the strength, electricity-wise, of your item. For instance, if you have a hair straightener or a hair dryer or something of that sort, it may have too many volts of electricity for the plugs in Ireland. Anything you're bringing that requires electricity, research, make sure you have, you know, the proper power converter protectors so that you don't start a fire or an explosion. Not something you want to do in your semester abroad. For my laptop, for my phone, for my headphones, I needed to charge them and so I had power converters, two of them, on the plugs in my um, apartment room and had no problems. Speaking of, bring chargers for any device that needs to potentially be recharged bring your chargers. Bring an extra. Chargers are important. <laughs> and, of course, a school bag! You are going there to study, you're gonna need a school bag, whatever that looks like for you. If it's a backpack, which I had, fantastic. If it's a tote bag, fantastic. If it's a really big purse, fantastic. Whatever you would normally use for school, bring. Even better if it's multi-purpose. For example, my backpack I used all the time. I used it 
for school, I used it for groceries, and I used it for little trips I took around Ireland. The more multi-purpose your items, the better. Speaking of school, let's discuss actually studying at UCD. Every professor and teaching aide that I learned from was great. They were knowledgeable, prepared to teach, happy to be there, and you could tell that they were passionate about their subjects. They all actively worked in their fields as well, with research trips, lab experiments, academic writing, whatever was relevant to them and their subject of study. For example, I had an archaeology professor, and every summer she takes students and goes to the ruins of Greece and, and Troy and all these places in the Mediterranean and actively worked in her field. And she taught me my favorite class, Lost Cities of the Ancient World. So she was, you know, teaching about the history of these ruins, these sites, these archaeological digs, these cities, and she had actual experience working on a lot of them, or at least visiting them. I also had a professor who was working on her PhD. She did uh, Celtic legends and tales, and she was actively reading all of these legends, all of these folklores and myths, and, and she was sharing with us the experience that she had talking to Irish people and, you know, getting the story that their great-great-grandfather passed down, or that their grandmother hand-wrote to them as a kid. She was just obviously so passionate and excited about what she was teaching, and that sort of environment is the best possible one you could ask for as a student. Homework assignments typically consisted of periodic essays to write, which, as somebody who really enjoys writing, I didn't mind. My astronomy class, we had a quiz every week, and that was basically our homework grade to keep us on track also. Obviously this homework format varies based on the level of the course, and I primarily took first or second level courses. However, my economics course was 300 level, and that was ironically the one with the least amount of work. That did, of course, mean that most of my grade was based on the two exams in the middle and at the end of the semester, so that's a little bit stressful. As long as you pay attention in class, that's really the main thing. Pay attention in class, you'll be fine. Study, you know, do whatever you need to do and you feel comfortable with. That's what college is about, you know? That doesn't change when you're in Ireland. Exams! Exams took place in December, right at the end of the semester, which is about the 6th to the 12th, I think? So somewhere around the second week of December was exams. They do not take place on UCD campus, but rather on a nearby exam hall. There are buses from UCD to that exam hall, if you'd like to take those. I do recommend taking those because they're the most reliable if you take one of those buses. And granted, you get there to like an hour early at the exam hall, but if you bring like notes or something to just read or, you know, look over before you go into the exam hall, it's an extra hour of study time. That's not bad. Otherwise, you can take public transport, you can get there however you need to, but be sure you get there on time because you can't enter late. <laughs> the last thing you want is to fail your course at UCD because you missed the exam, because the city bus was five minutes late and then it spiraled into you walking in right when the exam started. You don't want that. That would be horrible. So just take their shuttle buses. It's fine. You'll make it. And if you miss their shuttle buses, you gotta boogie to the nearest bus stop and try and get to the exam hall. Run if you have to. <laughs> the hall is not far from UCD. It is nearby, but just, you want to make sure that you're getting there with plenty of time to breathe. As exams approach, you'll receive so much information about that, you won't know what to do with it. Oh, hello. While you're here, I guess we might as well discuss transportation. Hi. First of all, buses. There are bus stops all around UCD campus. Google Maps, and I cannot stress this enough, is your best friend. <laughs> so if you need to be at a location at a certain time, you ask Google Maps. You say, oh dear Google Maps, I need to reach this destination. It is of the utmost importance. And Google Maps says, okay, here child is what you do. And it gives you the walking directions to the nearest bus stop, which bus to get on. If there's a transfer, it tells you what stop to get off and what bus to then get on again. And it tells you how to walk from the last bus stop where you get off to your destination, whatever it may be. So Google Maps is your best friend and you will use it all the time. Google Maps will also let you track um, which bus stop you're at and which one, you know, which ones you'll pass on the list so that you can kind of uh, keep an eye on when to get off and hit the button on the bus because there's this red square button on the bus that I didn't realize at first what it was. It looks like an emergency stop button. It's not. If you need to get off at whatever the next stop is, you hit that button and they'll stop. You probably want to reach the bus stop a couple minutes before the bus is scheduled to leave at least. My rule of thumb was usually try to reach the bus stop about five minutes before. You will become accustomed to the bus stops, the ones that you use the most frequently. 39A, you will use the bus 39A all the time to get in and out of the city center and back to UCD. If you get lost, don't sweat it, all right? 
just pull out your phone, use Google Maps, it'll get you right back on track, it'll show you whatever the next bus stop is that you need to go to, take whatever the next bus is to go wherever you need to go, it will be okay, you're just seeing a little more of Ireland than you plan to see on that day that you get lost, it's fine. And if your phone is dead, just ask someone, all right? It'll be okay. Now, you should be careful of strangers, obviously, like anywhere else, but you should be okay. The people in Ireland are honestly so, so friendly and, and nice and their crime rate is really low, so you should be okay. Or ask, you know, like, is this the bus that will bring me to this place? And odds are, if they're an Irish local, they'll know, and if they're a UCD international student who's trying to get there, they'll know, or at least they'll think they know, and then you can go and experience it together. Remember that all of the international students are new to this area, so you're not alone. And the Irish people are very willing to help for the most part. I mean, there's always exceptions, but I never experienced any negative experience with any Irish person that I talked to. So, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> You're going to need a Leap card. Now, what is a Leap card? Well, you can get this app. Here it is, this app that lets you put more money on this card, which allows you to then take the bus because the bus is not free. It's public transportation and it's cheap. It's the cheapest option, but it is not free. But if you have this card is the cheapest and you get on the bus and you tap it on the thing and then you've paid and you're good to go and get off whenever you need to get off. Keep in mind that the buses only accept leap card or coins. It does not take cash. You cannot hand them euros. It won't work unless it's like the dollar or $2 euro coins that Ireland uses or any of the other change. Um, it was about, I think, 260 per ride as an adult to get on the bus if you're using coins. If you use the Leap card, I think it was like a dollar, sorry, a euro. So yes, you want a Leap card. Order it in advance. Honestly, you can probably order it right before you leave for Ireland and then have it be mailed to your room, which by the way, if you get mail delivered to your apartment, if you're living on campus at UCD, they will deliver it to your apartment if it's like a little envelope otherwise it'll be in the mail room either way i would get that as soon as like physically possible i would do it right before you leave ireland because you're going to need it as soon as you get to ireland unless you want to use coins but that's going to be a lot of waste of money and if you don't have the right amount of coins they can't give you change so you're just out of luck if you only have three euro like three one dollar euros you have to pay three euros they're not going to give you change so learn that the hard way <laughs> get a leap card <laughs> Also use a leap card for the Lewis train system. Rachel, what is the Lewis tram system? I'm so glad you asked. The Lewis tram system is a tram system, all right, tracks with a tram that goes through the center city of Dublin. It has two main lines, the red and green, but they both branched out beyond that and there's different colors and different routes now, but the general idea is it's a tram that takes you through the city center. Now we did not use the Lewis often, it's just not the most convenient way to travel. Usually buses will get you where you need to go much quicker. However, it is fun. It's a fun way to experience the city and I'm sure you'll use it at least once or twice. So be prepared, it is fun. You know, enjoy some footage of the Lewis right here. Yep, that's the Lewis. Look how fun. It has a fun little bell and everything. Now, I'm telling you right now, here's how it works. You want to tap your card on the little machines at the Lewis stops before you get on and after you get off or you will be fined. Now, we did not get fined, but we were very confused about how this works. There you go, that's the Lua's. Works like the buses, except it's just not as convenient. Trains! Oh my gosh, trains are so fun. There are two types of trains in Dublin, Ireland at large, all right? There's the DART, the Dublin Area Rapid Transit. That's the DART. And then there's just the much larger system of national trains. The DART is really just for transportation within Dublin as a city. It's used by commuters and, you know, sometimes students. It's similar to a bus, but it's on a train track. The larger national rail service is nicer, but both work fine for wherever it is you need to go. Obviously, if you're using a larger national rail system, you're going somewhere outside of Dublin. It's, you know, national travel. And then the DART is within Dublin, so. I honestly found the dart fun because there were sections where you could stand and hold on to the rails and kind of like train surf with it, which I just like doing. I think it's fun. I liked doing that on the buses too. If there was an opportunity to stand, I wanted to stand. Just because it's fun to like try and balance as the whatever the vehicle is is moving. The trains were also fun just in a like more quiet, reflective way. You know, they were cleaner, they were very smooth. 
but both, again, are fine. And the, both trains, really, the National Rail Service and the DART, are not that much faster than a bus. It is better for anyone who gets motion sickness because they move in a pretty straight line, they're very steady. Compared to a bus, there's not so much stopping and starting, which is what makes the sickness worse. I understand because I get pretty bad motion sickness, which is unfortunate because I love traveling. And it's not gonna stop me, but it is always nice to not be nauseous, especially when you're with friends and doing fun things. <laughs> hey, Rachel here again to quickly cut in. So if you at all struggle with motion sickness like I do, I really recommend these motion sickness wristbands. My mother brought them when she visited me in Ireland and we went on a bus tour through Northern Ireland. And for the first time in my life, I was able to be on a bus or any moving vehicle and I wasn't nauseous. So I really recommend them. They just go on the wrist like a sweatband, right? Just right on the wrist, except they have these little bead on the inside and it pushes on a pressure point in your wrist. They say it's like three fingers down from the line of your wrist and then that's where the bead goes. And it helps, somehow it helps. I'm not sponsored by the company or anything. I, I don't know anything about the production of the product. I just know that it helped me and so it may help you too. Back to Rachel. Dublin is a very walkable city. The main area, especially around the River Liffey, is very walkable. It's a very pleasant area to just walk around and enjoy the day. St. Stephen's Green is a very touristy area. It's for shopping, but it's also just fun to walk around. They have buskers pretty much all the time, night and day, so it's just... Walking around Dublin is something that you can just choose to do. If you don't have anything to do, just say, you know what, I'm gonna go take a walk around the city. There's parks, there's fun little streets, there's music, just, you know. Go take a walk, go enjoy what the city has to offer because unlike in America, in a lot of places, you can actually walk around. It's fantastic. <laughs> Lastly is bikes! Bicycles! As a UCD international student, you have free access to a bike system that you can access through this app called Bleeper Active because they are called Bleeper Bikes. As soon as you get to UCD, you can use this app and you can access a private scheme that lets you use all of the international student bikes on campus. You can use them within the campus, which a lot of students do if they have to get across campus quickly or if they just don't feel like walking. And you can also use it, you know, in the local area around UCD. My roommate and I, for example, used these bikes every single week to go get our groceries from the Tesco Superstore. Uh, this was so much fun. I loved these bikes. Personal favorite way to use them was to get to Sandy Mount Beach, which my roommate and I would also visit most of the time when we were going to the Tesco each week. So that was fun. Here's some footage. Enjoy. This is Sandy Mount Beach. It don't look like much, but she's home. <laughs> you know, I, I like the ocean, so I liked standing in the muddy sand um, of Sandy Mount Beach. Now the app has a interactive map where you can see where the bikes are closest to you and just on campus in general. You can then go to a bike, use your phone to scan the like QR code on the back of the bike. It unlocks it, connects it to your phone so that it, your phone tracks where you're going. You can pause the bike and lock it like when you go into a store or something, or you're going to a, a classroom, um, and then you can go back out reopen the bike, bring it back to campus, because you always have to bring the bike back to campus. And then once you're back on campus, you can lock it, end your journey, and then somebody else can use the bike. It's really a great system. I hope that they continue to do it because it was just very, it was invaluable for my roommate and I to get around without relying on the buses for, you know, local things within and around UCD. I will admit that it is not the most reliable service. Sometimes there were glitches in the phone app where the bike wouldn't unlock, or sometimes somebody locked the bike incorrectly to begin with and so you can't access it, or the bike is broken, or you know, the tires popped, or something has happened. It, it happens. It is not the most reliable thing in the world. However, that said, it's still just a fun and convenient way to get around. Also, what better way to engross yourself in Irish living than riding your bikes around Dublin neighborhood streets? Speaking of Irish living, let's talk about student life. UCD has so many events and student groups that you can join. As an international student, you are already welcome to join any events or groups that the UCD international student group hosts and they do a lot, specifically at the beginning of the semester, to introduce you to other international students, which is fantastic and you should absolutely go to. I recommend it and I'm telling you, go to all the events that they host that you could possibly be interested in. And as a UCD student in general, you are welcome to join any UCD student groups. And there are so, so many. There's so many. Keep tabs on these groups and events through social media, particularly Instagram. Go to these accounts, find 
events, find groups, follow them, keep tabs on them so that you know what's going on and you know what you can sign up for, potentially. If working out is your thing, we took a couple yoga and Pilates classes, which were super fun. UCD has a huge student gym, which you are open to, as well as plenty of sports groups that you can join, not necessarily as a competitive thing, but just as an intramural, you know, as a club. There were tons that I wish I'd joined, I just didn't have the time for it with all the other events and groups that I was doing. You do have to register for the class 15 minutes before it starts, that's when it opens, which is basically as you're walking to the gym, you're registering for the class, so good luck. It is a little bit stressful, but I'm sure you'll do it. They seriously have anything you can imagine. I remember we were finishing up our yoga class once, and I looked out the window of the exercise room, and down below was a group doing fencing exercises, which I was jealous of and I wanted to learn how to fence, but I just didn't have time. <laughs> but of course, there's also student groups for any other interest you could have. Anything in the arts, anything in science, anything in history, anything in business. Whatever you have passion for, I'm sure there's a group. And if not, you know, start one. That's up to you. And these groups often collaborate. So if you're in the baking club and your friend is in the arts club, you'll potentially do something together. And that's a super fun way to eat, make even more friends, meet even more people. And I say this as an introvert who sucks at social situations, like really bad. It's okay, you'll do it. It's so fun and it's really good for you. So <laughs> suck it up and go to the events. I really recommend joining at least one or two groups. There are so many different ways to be involved and it costs like a euro or two potentially to join the group and then you're set and you can do all their things with them. So please do it you will not regret it. And I say this because I really prioritized exploring Ireland and doing, you know, a lot of travel while I was there, and so I didn't go to a ton of events. I wish I went to a few more, but you can do it even while prioritizing your school and your traveling. If you are going all the way to Ireland to study, then you are going to want to explore Ireland. UCD is conveniently located near Dublin, so you will have no trouble at all getting to the city to explore. Keep an eye out for frequented tourist spots or tourist events that you want to visit so that you can make time to go and do those things. Yellow umbrella tours are a great way to see the city center, especially when you first arrive because they're free. I'm not even joking, they're literally free. You have to register online for a spot just so that the crowds aren't too large, and then they're like local students and performers will take you around the city, either the north side or the south side or whichever one you book, and they will show you some of the key spots, tell you a little bit about their history, and it is a great way to get your bearings when you first enter the city. I cannot recommend that enough. My roommate and I, when we first got there, probably a week in, took a south side Dublin tour. And it was so valuable for us because we ended up in South Side of Dublin all the time throughout the semester, all the time. And so it was great for us to get familiar with the area and kind of introduced in a really like safe and educational way. And I'm serious, the tour is literally free. You just have to sign up, put your name in it, and then you can always tip. Tipping is always appreciated. I'll put more on tipping in the tips section of the video because that just seems fitting. Our tour guide was very nice, very knowledgeable, just a great guide. And a great guy. I think I tossed him like five euro and that seemed to be the general group activity. Around Dublin there are plenty of places worth visiting too, such as Malahide Castle, they have some really pretty gardens. Hoth, which was one of my favorite places in Ireland and definitely my favorite place in Dublin. It's beautiful, I highly recommend it, especially in um, September or maybe May, like the tail end of your semester where it's a bit warmer, a little bit sunnier. It's really beautiful to go to Hoth if you can find a great weather day for it. And Glendalough is another fantastic place near Dublin that you should absolutely visit. I have a vlog up on Glendalough and Hoth and I will link them in the description below if you're interested. Northern Ireland is worth at least taking a tour. I took a bus. It was just a day trip and I'm perfectly satisfied with that time spent in Northern Ireland. It's a beautiful part of the country, don't get me wrong, but there's so much to see in Ireland. That's all you really need. You can stay longer if you want to, obviously. Belfast is fun to see, but a lot of time there is not really needed, I feel. The Giant's Causeway, absolutely worth visiting. That might just be because I love cool rocks and the ocean, so that was like the perfect place for me to go. We also had lunch at a little inn above the causeway, and my mother was visiting, so the two of us shared a slice of banoffee pie over tea in this little library cafe room in this inn, and that's just a sweet memory for me personally. Galway is like a miniature Dublin, and I highly recommend it, especially at Christmas time because they have a great little Christmas market in the main square park area. But it's just a fun little city to walk around and explore. It's like I said, it's like Dublin, but much smaller. <laughs>
The Cliffs of Moher can be reached via a bus from Galway. That was another highlight of my time in Ireland. It is just a breathtaking place to see in real life. No pictures or videos can do it justice. Here are some. I will try to impart the absolute majesty of this beautiful place on you, but I can't. You just have to see it for yourself. Again, I am a sucker for cool rocks and the ocean, so this is my perfect place. Another bus tour we took from Galway was through the Hills of Connemara, which is an Irish song called The Hills of Connemara. And again, like everything else in Ireland, it was beautiful. That's really what you can expect from your time traveling the country, is everything you see will be so green and so beautiful. Killarney is another great place to visit. It has gorgeous scenery and a really cute main street that I liked walking down and shopping. Killarney Riding Stables offers a horseback tour through a park overlooking the Ring of Kerry. This felt like a once in a lifetime activity and I always recommend it to anyone who is visiting anywhere near Killarney. If you're going to Ireland at all, I'm going to recommend to you taking a horse tour with Clarny Riding Stables in Killarney. Here's an insider tip. Choose the early morning slot. If you can pull yourself out of bed, I promise it's worth it. If you take the early morning, it's like 9 a.m. I think, for the best experience. The park was full of these deer of different breeds that just watch you pass. They play in the grass, they sit and just enjoy you passing on your horses because, and I learned this while I was there from my lovely guides, these deer have no natural predators. They're so used to people that they just don't mind you at all and you can get actually quite close to them on the horse. It's very fairytale-like. I felt like a princess in the enchanted forest when I was there. We went through this little part of the trail under trees and there was a bird fluttering around with us, following us down the trail. Oh my gosh, it's the most magical place. I can't get over it. From Killarney, you can also access Ross Castle. It's just a little bit of a taxi drive or an Uber or whatever. If you have a car, that works too. Unfortunately, you can't take the horse there, but that would be fun, wouldn't it? Also, you can access Muckross Park, which has Muckross Manor, Muckross Abbey, and Torque Waterfall, all located within hiking distance. I say hiking, it's really just a walk you know, a mile in either direction, which again, since it's a beautiful park, it won't even feel like that. You're just enjoying the view. They also had deer. It was just so incredible. It's just ridiculously beautiful. Like, it's not even fair. My final tourist recommendation is Blarney Castle outside of Cork. You could spend all day in the park around this castle, and we nearly did, but you must visit the castle. If you kiss the stone, you're said to get seven years of eloquence. So tell me, do I speak with the charm and grace of an angel? I have six and a half years left, so be prepared for my upcoming poetry readings, I suppose. <laughs> Regardless of all the tourism you can do on your own, make sure to take advantage of UCD-sponsored excursions because they will bring you places you didn't even think about going or that you may not have heard of, and they often have just fun local activities. That is the bulk of my wisdom to impart on you. However, I will leave you with a few tips and tricks to make your experience in Ireland just a little bit easier, because the more confident you feel in yourself, the more fun you'll be able to have. So first, tips are not expected like they are in the US, but they are always welcome. A good rule of thumb is to give about 10 or 15% uh, for good restaurant service in touristy spots or for something like a Yellow Umbrellas tour. Like for example, I think, again, I tossed them like a, like a five euro. Whatever you're comfortable with, they're not going to, you know, yell at you if you don't tip them, but you should, probably should. At least a few bucks. Don't feel bad about not tipping. It's weird to get used to at first, especially like at bars and things. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I tipped for most of the trip for a lot of things, just because, especially for taxis and things, just because it felt weird not to. But it's up to you. If there are any Irish service workers in the comments, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, and I can try to upend this tipping tip, but... This is what I understood the tipping culture to be while I was there. My next tip is to take advantage of campus features. For example, there is a classics museum in the Newman building. Not many people know about it. It's basically the size of like a classroom and a half, and it is full of artifacts, literal, real, ancient artifacts from ancient Greece and ancient Rome and ancient Egypt, and all of these beautiful places, and they have, you know, little figurines and vases and amphorae. Like, it's, it's incredible, and as a... a an ancient history nerd myself, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. How does a college, like I can take my economics class and then I can go upstairs and look at ancient artifacts. 
that's the coolest thing in the world. So definitely check out the Classics Museum and be aware of different features there are on campus that might interest you. For example, there is a clubhouse on campus, which is basically just a pub, but they have uh, weekly events such as karaoke nights or like ugly t-shirt nights and you can drink and you can pregame. They did a pub crawl at the beginning of the semester where everybody went to the clubhouse first and had a drink and then they led them through the city to various pubs. Be aware of events. Follow ResLife on Instagram. There's a ton of different UCD pages and for every little organization and activity there's probably a separate Instagram account. Just be aware of them and try to be involved because you will get to do so many fun things that you would not be able to do on your own. I mentioned before that Google Maps will be your best friend but there are several other apps that you may find beneficial for your time in Ireland. They are Get Your Guide where you can book tours and different activities in Ireland and anywhere. Eventbrite, which is great for finding local events. I think we booked a comedy club through here, which was also a super fun night. You can use Hotels.com, and for US students, you can get student discounts through uni days for Hotels.com. I'm not sure how applicable that is to Ireland, but it may be a beneficial uh, site. Also, Booking.com is great for if you are looking for accommodation elsewhere in Ireland during some travel, or in Europe as a whole. You don't have to stay in Ireland during the whole trip. Here's the thing. If you want to leave Ireland and visit other European countries, that is fine. Make sure you have your visa. I had a problem with getting my visa because I had an appointment right at the beginning of the semester, which is exactly what you want, and then I got COVID. And I missed that appointment, obviously, because I was contagious with COVID. And then the next available appointment was not until December or November. Regardless, I didn't have a chance to travel outside of Ireland. I went to Northern Ireland, but that was on a tour bus, and so they didn't really care about borders, but... It could be difficult if you went to, you know, France or something, or Scotland. You might have trouble coming back and you do not want that added stress to your semester. Smart Traveler is a good app for uh, US students because it uh, connects you to the embassies locally. And if there's an emergency, like a COVID outbreak or something worse, hopefully not, but it's good to be prepared. So have something like that just in case. Be registered with the US embassy also, by the way. I think you might have to when you're going through your study abroad application through your home university, but check it out if you are not familiar with it, it's worth at least going to the webpage and reading. Weather. I've been asked about the weather. People want to know, is it really as rainy as people say it is? And the answer is kind of. I love the rain, so I didn't really notice it as much. However, I don't think it was that bad. Winter is very mild. It snowed twice while I was there, and that was super rare. People were like freaking out about it. Like, it never snows here. Otherwise, it was just rainy and pretty mild, I thought, temperature-wise. Here's the thing, though, is it'll start raining in Ireland, and then it'll stop and then it'll start and it'll stop. It's not like the entire day is a washout. But yeah, I mean, expect rain. You know, bring an umbrella, bring a rain jacket, but it's not like it's going to keep you inside for the entire semester. And if rain is gonna keep you inside anyway, you probably shouldn't go to Ireland. <laughs> You're not the wicked witch. You're not gonna melt. It's just a bit of water. You'll be all right. <laughs> Roommates, as soon as they register for their accommodation, if they're in the same apartment as you, you should be able to find them on SysWeb. Whoa, look at that light. Once you know their names, try to find them on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever platforms you use. Who uses Facebook these days, let's be honest. But as soon as you know the names of your roommates, try to find them on social media. Try and message them, connect with them, get to know them, you know, see when they're arriving, see if you can coordinate going to Ikea sometime to get apartment things. At the beginning of the semester, they will host this sort of donation drive where people who are past students who donated their uh, kitchen and like bedroom things, you could get them for free by going. And they had all sorts of things from pots and pans and, you know, cutlery and, and kitchen tools to hangers and laundry baskets and all sorts of things. So that's always nice because then you don't have to pay for things that you're just going to leave behind anyway, probably. My roommate and I, I looked for her on Instagram, couldn't find her. And then a few days later, she messaged me and found me. So here's another thing I advise. Once you know that you're going to UCD and if you know that you're going to have roommates, Put UCD in your bio or like Ireland Bound or, or something to let people know if they are looking for you that you are the person with the same name as their roommate and they can find you and message you and they will be comfortable and pretty confident that you are the person they are looking for on social media. I also recommend recording your experience. So whatever is most comfortable and familiar to you or that you are just the most interested in, whether it's blogging or vlogging or writing in a diary or just taking a lot of pictures and doing photography, Whatever way you want to record your experience, do it. It's so great to have these tangible memories of your time in Ireland. You know, not necessarily excessively or obsessively, but 
enough that you have something to remember your time that, from your experience. I personally did all of the things above. I took photos and videos and I wrote in my diary and I blogged. Here's my blog if you want to check it out. And I'm still working on them. I also vlogged, obviously. That's what the rest of this channel is. Lastly, if you are scared or nervous in any way about your time in Ireland, it's, it's natural. That's excitement, that's anticipation, that's the same exact feeling. Your nervousness is also excitement. And you should be anticipating your time because it's very exciting. And it's a new experience, so you should also be nervous. But it's okay. Embrace that nervousness, embrace that excitement, and understand that you're going to have such a great adventure and just a grand old time. I assure you, you are capable of this and you're gonna rock it. So there you have it. I hope this information guides you, however, is most helpful for your experience at UCD. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to comment them and I will answer them as soon as I possibly can to the best of my ability. And if anyone else has any wisdom or experience to impart on the people in the comment sections, feel free to do so. I will also probably answer, but it's better to have different perspectives, different experiences, and I'm sure things will change over time that I can't update my experience on because I've already had my experience. So feel free to add anything at all that you think would be helpful. And after you have your own experience at UCD and you have more lessons to share, feel free to come back and share them with everybody in the comments, myself included, because then we can all continue to learn. But you are going to learn so much about yourself and about your life and about how you interact with people and the environment, and you're going to have the best experience, I promise you. Bye! <laughs>